Hello, I'm Bernard Dan. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology, and I'm having a conversation today with Claire Cooper-Marcus. Good morning, Claire. Good morning. So, Claire, just a word of background about yourself. Yes, I'm originally from England. I am a retired professor of architecture and landscape architecture at the University of California in Berkeley. And you wrote a book uh, entitled Therapeutic Landscapes. Uh, how did you come to this idea of designing therapeutic landscapes? Some time ago in the mid-80s, a colleague named Roger Ulrich, based on some research, indicated that people who are hospitalized looking out at trees feel less pain, call the nurse less often, and go home sooner than people with the same condition looking out at a brick wall. This piece of research triggered a whole field which we're calling healing or therapeutic gardens in healthcare. And the applications are very wide, aren't they? Yes. Since that original research, myself and many others have developed specific gardens for specific patient groups, such as those in adult care, children's hospitals, senior facilities for the frail, facilities for those with Alzheimer's disease, and so on, burn patients, uh, cancer patients, very specific differences between these gardens. Now, we tend to see increasingly those uh, so-called therapeutic or, or healing gardens, and sometimes I wonder what is really therapeutic. Are there some rules that one must adhere to? Yes, I think so. One is that it should be predominantly green because the evidence is that stepping from a stressful situation, which most hospitals are, into somewhere that's predominantly naturally green lowers people's stress levels and improves their immune system. So one basic rule would be that a space called a therapeutic garden needs to be probably 70% green and the rest would be what we call hardscape, but not less than 70% green. So it needs to feel of stepping into a green oasis. And are there pitfalls too? Yes, unfortunately, it's become a bit of a marketing tool, and what they've done is put a space in that sometimes is not predominantly green and just has a few plants, and it's essentially like a plaza or something you might have outside an office building, and it's definitely, in our eyes, not a healing garden. Unfortunately, there is no method yet for certifying healing gardens to say this is exactly what there has to be and, and what you've done there is not one. For a number of years in the world of neurodisability, we've been considering contextual factors and I'm sure that uh, much research still needs to be done on therapeutic uh, landscape. Which actors do you think uh, are really important to be involved in this research? Well, first of all, the design profession that should be involved is landscape architecture, not architecture. Uh, sorry if that hurts the feelings of some architects, but architects are not trained to design gardens. Landscape architects are, and they're the profession who should start to have more training in the notion of therapeutic landscapes. And what we need also is more evidence we need to start uh, assembling evidence of, for example, how a garden could benefit uh, a child with autism. I would defer to you to know how to start doing that research, but that's what's going to be essential. So there is definitely a case for creating a, a forum for such meetings and for thinking together how to improve the field for the benefit of children with neurodisabilities. Yes, and I think another parallel way of thinking about this is what is called participatory design. If you were thinking about, let's say, designing or creating an outdoor space for children with autism, that there be an interdisciplinary team, including the landscape architect, and the clinical staff and maybe parents to work together to figure out what is it that would benefit these children by being outside? Thank you. I think this is a clear invitation for a good collaboration between us and many people in both our fields. Thank you so much, Claire.